so we are studying helical gears okay in unit number 2 we are studying helical gears then we will go for spiral gears bevel and worm and worm wheel in the last lecture we have uh, seen uh, the introduction to helical gears helical gears have high load carrying capacity than spur gears because of nature of inclination of teeth area of contact is increased so these gears are used for high load and high speed applications okay. their engagement is also gradual engagement so less impact stresses are developed then we have gone through the gear to terminology we have two planes one is normal plane and another is transverse plane so we can cut the gear along these two planes correct so for normal plane we have normal module mn for transverse plane we have transverse module mt the pitch measured in normal plane is normal circular pitch which is equals to pi times the module okay in the normal plane so normal module circular pitch is always pi times the module and transverse pitch is also equals to pi times the transverse module correct pi times the transverse module and this is equals to pitch circle diameter divided by number of teeth and transverse module for both the mating gears is same okay this is not equals to mn you cannot take this as mn this is mt transverse module okay and if you want to relate mn to mt from mt you can find out the value of normal module which is equals to cos of alpha times the transverse module correct cos of alpha times the transverse module the same relation exists between pn and pt pn equals to cos of alpha times pt so you'll remember these things he clearly you must be able to differentiate between these two planes transverse plane and normal plane what is normal module what is transverse module okay just remember this now in today's lecture we will study about the concept of equivalent spur gear or formative number of teeth so just write down the title equivalent spur gear or formative number of teeth now we will draw the diagram and try to understand what is mean by equivalent spur gear so write down this title first of all we will draw the pitch cylinder of helical gear the pitch surface of helical gear is a cylinder so we'll draw the pitch uh, cylinder of helical gear so when we uh, look at the helical gear from top it will appear as a rectangle so draw the rectangle thoda left top corner la kada khali we want this space okay evdi space sodaychi khali right bottom corner la near the diagram okay we will require this space we are going to expand our diagram in this direction so to place your rectangle so that you get some space down the rectangle okay this is the pitch cylinder of helical gear now next draw the tooth helix center line of one of the tooth rectangle cha madhe kadaychi the center line of one of the tooth then we will show the axis of gear axis of gear is normal to the transverse plane this is the transverse plane in which the gear is rotating if you look from the top aplela gear asa disel it is a axis of rotation of gear in the in the top view it will look like this so show the axis of rotation of gear 
which will intersect this helix at the midpoint exactly okay after this mark the dimension of pitch cylinder of helical gear the radius of pitch cylinder is r I mean, if you cut the gear in the transverse plane, the radius of that circle will be R. Show the transverse plane TT, which is intersecting the helix and the center line of gear at the midpoint. So the transverse plane, this will be your assignment number 12. Zala. Next show the normal plane NN. This normal plane is perpendicular to the helix or teeth. Show the normal plane NN which is perpendicular to the helix. Now all of us know that the angle between normal plane and transverse plane is helix angle, alpha. We have seen this during gear tooth terminology for helical gears. So mark that angle, angle between normal plane and transverse plane is equals to helix angle alpha. Okay. Now what we will do, we will cut the helical gear or pitch cylinder of helical gear using the normal plane NN. to obtain the normal section of pitch cylinder. So this is, these are the projection lines and if I cut the helical gear using the normal plane, time will apply we will get an ellipse. Grover, circle that tirka cut ke what we get? We get an ellipse. And if you cut the pitch uh, cylinder along the transverse plane, you will get the circle, correct? So draw this ellipse as the normal section. So one minute, look at this screen. This is the cylinder, suppose. If I cut the cylinder this using this cutting plane, the cross section can as a circle, correct? Ani, if I cut this cylinder using an inclined plane, what will be the cross section? It will be an ellipse. All of you have studied sectional views in engineering graphics. Okay. So just imagine this. If you cut the piece, uh, cylinder or any cylinder using an inclined line, we always get the cross section in the form of an ellipse. So draw this ellipse as the normal section of pitch cylinder of helical gear. Free hand cut ellipse. The next radius of this ellipse is small r minor radius and major radius is r upon cos of alpha okay so semi minor axis will be 2 times the r and semi major axis is 2 times r upon cos of alpha so just show these dimensions. Okay, done. So we have seen if we cut the pitch cylinder of helical gear 
along its normal plane, the result is an ellipse. Now what we will do, this is elliptical curve, I need the pitch point, sh uh, show the pitch point P. Now radius of this ellipse, or radius of curvature of this ellipse at the pitch point P will be equals to RE. Look at this screen, radius of curvature means pitch point P, if you draw the circular arc, its radius will be RE. So draw the circular arc at point P. Okay. See how it is? We have only drawn the part of the circle, okay. Because I as a circle I have an either ellipse. Okay, and this is the pitch point P. Okay. And radius of this circle is R E. So produce this circular arc at pitch point P and mark the radius of this circle RE, we call it as equivalent radius. Okay. And now this is this is imaginary. Okay. We are imagining something. Upon actually subsection cut ke lila hai, we got an ellipse. Now what we are imagining that if I draw the circle tangent to this ellipse at pitch point P, its radius will be R E. Okay. Now what we can assume that the sample normal section cut ke lila ellipse mila la, tasa anki nek circle hai, circular this one. So we can consider this as pitch surface in the normal plane. And a circular pitch surface kasa sasto. Spur gear la pan cut kill other. What we get? Circular pitch surface. If we cut the spur gear along the normal plane or plane normal to the teeth, we get the circular pitch surface. So now what we are going to assume that this circular arc is nothing but the circular pitch surface of an imaginary spur gear in normal plane. Okay. And we call such a spur gear as equivalent spur gear. This concept is used just to simplify the analysis of helical gears. Okay, so name this circle as Pitch circle of equivalent spur gear in normal plane. Okay. Now look here, look at the screen, what I am drawing. So this is an inclined teeth of helical gear. And it has a pitch surface as well, which is cylindrical. I will draw again. This is the pitch cylinder. Correct. And this is the teeth, which is inclined. Now, to the imagine correct, okay. Now I will cut this cylinder using the transverse plane. At the transverse plane is a cut kela. The what you will get a cylinder circle minar. Hmm. 
Okay, this is one thing. So, now, I will repeat. Now, instead of transverse plane, let us use the normal plane. Okay. Normal plane ni cut ke la. But we get an ellipse, correct? We get an ellipse. Cutting plane tirka kela. So sectional view will be ellipse. We are looking at the section planes from this side. Now if I change my position, Mr. Asabagitla perpendicular to the normal plane. Listen carefully. If I look at this section perpendicular to the normal plane, Malakai this narai has a ellipse minala. Those are me, you could never get parallel to the axis of uh, tooth. It will appear as a circle. And this is that circle, which is having radius of RE. If you look at the helical gear along the direction parallel to the axis of teeth in this direction, it will look like a spur gear. Okay, so we call this circle as equivalent or pitch circle of equivalent spur gear. Okay, let it be. Now, write down this. Equivalent pitch radius is equals to Re and value of Re is always taken as R upon cos square alpha. Write this. Re equals to R upon cos square alpha is the radius of equivalent spur gear in normal plane radius of equivalence per gear in normal plane so the relation for diameter will be the same de equals to d upon cos square alpha now write down this module in normal plane equals to module of equivalence per gear correct so what we can write, mn is equals to de by te, because we have spur here in the normal plane now. So module in normal plane can be expressed as the ratio of pitch circle diameter of equivalent spur gear to the number of teeth on equivalent spur gear. So mn is equals to de upon te is the normal module. So next, we will simplify this equation. So mn is equals to just substitute the value of de from here. So mn is equals to what we get? mn is equals to d upon te cos square alpha. So you have to solve this, simplify this, write this. Okay, so let us proceed. We are in the process of determining the equation for number of teeth on equivalence per gear. Okay. So I have rearranged this equation. So T is equals to D upon Mn into cos square alpha because we are determining number of teeth on equivalent spur gear. So next, we have this equation with us. What is mn? It is cos of alpha times mt. mn equals to d by t cos of alpha or mt cos of alpha, he could substitute karayana. So what we get? T e is equals to d upon d by t into cos of alpha into cos square alpha.
okay m t equals to d by t and if we put this for m n in the denominator we get this this d d will vanish and the final equation for number of teeth on equivalence per year is equals to t divided by cos square alpha it's very simple to remember like a part from target t is equals to t divided by cos cube alpha okay te manje kai number of teeth on equivalence per year in normal plane and we have imagined all these things so we call this as virtual number of teeth te aplyala disat nahi these are only for analytical calculations or we call this te as formative number of teeth okay now what is this t number of teeth on helical gear and alpha is the helix angle okay so we have done with the concept of equivalence per gear now we will continue with the next topic <clears throat> okay akshay akshay upre jala ka equation lun the equation looks at the te is equals to t upon cos cube alpha number of teeth on equivalence per year in the normal plane samajla na te apan helical gear cha ha teeth tirke astat tacha samor jaun jar baghitla tar aplyala te circle as disel baroba okay now we'll continue wait for a minute i will change my ppt is there so what we have seen ata parant kay kay bagitlela hai introduction helical gear what is helical gear uh, tips incline as that so we have large contact area so high load carrying capacity engagement is gradual smooth engagement so they can be used for high speed applications because of gradual engagement of teeth they produce less noise then we have seen the terminology normal module transverse module normal pitch transverse pitch relation between normal pressure angle and transverse pressure angle over axial pitch then we have seen the formative number of teeth the concept of equivalence per gear in normal plane so number of teeth on equivalence per gear are te is equals to t upon cos cube alpha now we will go through helical gear force analysis helical gear force analysis so all of you please draw this pitch cylinder of helical gear pitch cylinder of helical gear this diagram is important the questions kashi vicharat maite kay cha var evaluate the forces acting on the given helical gear with neat diagram तुम्हाला परीक्षेत असा जर क्वेश्चन आला तर यू हॅव टू ड्रॉ दिस डायग्राम 
So draw the pitch cylinder. Mark the radius of pitch cylinder as R. Draw the pitch circle using a center line. Draw the pitch circle using a center line. This is our pitch circle which is shown in blue color. Show the helix. Helix means teeth, center line of teeth. Which is shown here, helix. Shown in red color. Now, you will identify the point or mark the point or highlight the point of intersection of this helix and this pitch circle. This is intersect with the point is dark, highlight that point like this using the pencil or pen. Highlight the point of intersection of pitch circle and helix. And now place this parallelogram at that point. Carefully draw karaicha. Hey, kasa draw karnar? Pehle ye horizontal line kada. Kalchi, draw this horizontal line. Then draw these two vertical lines. And the real line join karaichi. Then this line is parallel to the axis of gear. This is parallel to axis of gear. Okay. So complete this parallelogram using dotted lines, faint dotted lines, faint. Done. Kunal. Kunal, so play card. Screen this take a second now. Kishore. Hello, sir. Uh, diagram is a parallelogram. Okay. Now we will mark the forces. Name these points A, B, C, D. Name these corners as A, this corner as B, ha C, and ha D. A, B, C, D, the one. Okay, next. Join A to D and B to C. Join A to D and B to C. Join A, D and B, C using dotted line. Okay. Now this, listen, A, B, C, D 
is a normal plane plane normal to the helix or tith okay a b c d is a normal plane don't write anything a b c d is a normal plane so pay understand this a b c d is a plane normal to the tith or helix clear now we know that force exerted by driving gear always acts normal to the contacting surfaces because normal at the point of contact passes through the pitch point and this line is called as line of action over and the forces are transmitted along this line because path of contact lies on the common normal at the point of contact always बरोबर ना स्क्वेअर गिअर रिमेंबर स्क्वेअर गिअर दिस इज बेस सर्कल दिस इज बेस सर्कल दिस इज द कॉमन टाइम्स इन टू टू बेस सर्कल्स ई एफ एंड दिस कॉमन टाइम्स इन टू टू बेस सर्कल्स इज ऑलवेज नॉर्मल टू दी टू प्रोफाइल्स विच आर इन मेच विथ इच अदर ऑलवेज correct and your point of contact between a pair of teeth lies on this line only so if you rotate this gear like this it will rotate the mating gear in opposite direction and the point of contact will travel along this line so point of contact is travel along this line manje kay ahe if the contact between two gears occur on this line only that means whatever force is exerted by the driving gear on the driven gear it must act along this line and this line is normal to the tith so force exerted by driving gear acts normal to contacting surfaces so fn the normal force exerted by driving gear on the driven gear must lie in the normal plane abcd must lie in the normal plane a b c d samajh lo okay so what we will do now we will show the force fn in the normal plane he kai draw karu na ka bar ka black lines this is just for understanding highlight karaycha hota mala to plane don't draw those black lines this was just to understand or highlight this plane a b c d is a normal plane and now what we are going to do we will show the fn in this plane okay this is the position of fn is laga fn so draw a force fn from a to c in the plane abcd okay like this So Fn is the normal force, or the total force applied by driving gear on the driven gear. Fn is acting in the normal plane ABCD. So show the force Fn from A to C. So Fn in the normal plane ABCD. Now what is done? this fn is divided into three components first one is tangential component ft which is the transmitted load or the force producing the torque then fa the axial component we call it as the thrust And third one is fr radial component okay so fn is divided into three components ft fa and fr ft fa and fr kai kelela hai we will break this fn into three components ft fa and fr 
फर्स्ट वन एफ टी स्क्रीन कड़े बिथ बिथे दिस इज एफ टी to show the force ft then fa axial force show the axial force fa which is parallel to the axis of gear the last one is fr force acting along the radius of pitch cylinder last one is fr force acting along the radius of pitch cylinder chalega reply kara kuni tari yes sir Okay. Now, F n is the total force, and we have divided this total force into three components. One is tangential component. This is responsible for producing the torque for rotation of the gear. F a is the axial force. We call it as axial thrust. it is acting along the axis of the gear and fr is the radial force is acting in the radial direction now up to this our job is to find out the values of these forces mujhe ye equation tayar karne chahiye what is fn what is fr what is fa and what is ft okay what is ft so our next task is to determine the values of all these four components fn ft fa and fr and we will do that in next lecture so for next lecture come with this diagram with you okay we will make use of this diagram and derive the equations for fa fr fn and ft now if you have any